it's sometimes too easy to take your pony for granted. Do you really know all about him and his welfare? There are a lot of different aspects to be considered. We'll be taking a look at them to help you look after your pony. The art of grooming, tying ponies correctly and how to handle hooves safely. Clothes are important. Not only can they look good, but they have to be safe as well. Stabling, in and around the yard. The importance of bedding and keeping it clean. Feeding, we look at the rules of feeding and explain why they're so important. Leading a pony incorrectly can cause all sorts of havoc we guide you through the proper procedure. Tacking up correctly and safely. Useful hints on cleaning and caring for your tack. Mary Thompson is one of Britain's most consistent and talented three-day event riders. She's the reigning British Open champion, having won the event at Gatcom Park for the past two years, riding King Boris and King William respectively. She and King William were members of the gold medal winning British team at the 1991 European Championships held at Punchestown, Ireland. You can have a lot of fun with horses and ponies, providing you remember that they have feelings of their own and that they can think for themselves. They're chiefly motivated by food. Although man has been domesticating horses and ponies over thousands of years, they're still very timid creatures who show remarkable tolerance to our demands. They're very quick to pick up good and bad habits and are extremely generous in a way they let us ride them in exchange for food and care. Ponies are willing to do what we ask of them as long as we ask them in a way that they understand. Walk on. They are intelligent enough to learn a few words we repeat, but often appear stubborn and awkward simply because they don't understand. So how do you ask them properly? This video shows you how to look after and get the best out of handling your pony. In the wild, ponies live in herds and enjoy the company of others. They use their ears, eyes and sense of smell in a unique way. The ears positioned on the side of their head, are able to rotate to take in sounds at the front, side and back. So they can often be listening to something other than your commands, especially if the sound is more interesting, like this feed bucket, for example. Eyes, too, are positioned at the side. This means that the pony's field of vision is far greater than ours and takes in much of what goes on behind him, although he can't see immediately behind his tail or directly under his nose. That's why we offer tidbits from a flat palm. The pony takes it using sense of smell and feel. Yeah. Oh, delicious, thank you. Mm. Because of the position of his eyes, it makes sense to always approach horses and ponies towards their shoulder, so that they have time to see you coming and have no excuse to be startled. We should also talk softly in a positive way to give them confidence. Wooing and steadying in a loud voice can often have negative results, but copper doesn't seem to mind too much. Keeping your pony's coat healthy and clean requires grooming. The art of getting all the dirt off a pony and onto yourself. Here's the equipment you'll need to achieve this feat. Before you begin, short rack your pony to prevent him from trampling all over you. Never tie the rope directly through the ring. If something were to frighten Ginger, he could injure himself pulling back against the rope or even pull the ring out of the wall. So we threaded the rope through a piece of string. In an emergency, the string will break. Use a quick release knot so you can pull the loose end 
and free the pony quickly should you need to. It's dangerous to tie ponies to something flimsy like a drain pipe or car bumper, as these can become detached and cause injury. Always use a proper ring with the string attached and make sure it's short so he can't tie himself in knots. Yeah, I can't reach anything now. Look, I can hardly move. Most ponies who work will need shoeing. Their hooves are similar to our finger and toenails, so they need regular trimming and protection from hard roads and stony paths. Oh, I wanted slingbacks. Iron shoes are shaped to the individual hoof exactly for a perfect fit. Mmm, very comfy. And then special nails, called clenches, hold the shoes on until they wear out, and another set is required, usually every four to six weeks. To avoid a hoof full of iron landing on your foot, try handling hooves in a considerate but firm manner. Don't just grab hold of a fetlock without warning. You wouldn't like it if someone suddenly grabbed your ankle. Face his tail, and starting at the shoulder, run your hand all the way down the back of the leg to his fetlock. Be ready to catch the hoof as it comes up. The hoof pick cleans out the insides of the hooves, and is used with care around the triangular area known as the frog. This is the pony's natural anti-concussion device, and is easily damaged. So we use the hoof pick from heel to sole. But what if all your efforts result in a pony who appears to have his hooves nailed to the floor? If you push the back of his knee, you should find he lifts his hoof. Hooves should be picked out at least once a day, not only to clean them, but to inspect the condition of the sole and shoes. If he waves his leg about or tries to stamp it down again, hold on to both the knee and the hoof Stand until he stops Jesus. fidgeting. Once you've finished with the hoof, be sure to put it down gently on the floor again. Good boy. Now the hind legs. Face his tail and slip your hand inside his hock down to the hoof. Hind legs are comfortable if held out behind the pony. If hooves are picked out in the same order every time, ponies soon learn to anticipate which one you'll want next and be ready. Plastic curry comb. Used to remove mud from the pony's body or loose hairs when he sheds his winter coat. Use it carefully on bony parts. This dandy brush is really too hard to use on his face. He said not on my face. But it's great for brushing mud from his body and legs. But it's prickly, so don't be rough. The dandy brush gets rid of dirt without getting close to the skin and removing the oils in the coat. For this reason, it's used on ponies kept at grass, as they need the natural grease in their coats to keep warm and dry. The body brush, however, with its closer, softer bristles, gets right into the coat and takes out the grease. This brush is used on stable-kept ponies and is cleaned with the metal curry comb. Mmm, that's nice. It's also used on manes and tails, as it won't break or split the long hairs. On the near side, the handler uses this brush in her left hand, so that she can put some weight behind the stroke. And don't dab, be firm. Hoof oil improves the appearance of the hooves and looks smart on special occasions. Applied with a brush, both inside and outside the hoof, it gives an extra shine prior to riding. Brush the oil onto the sole and the bulbs of the heels as well as the outside wall. See how posh it looks. Use damp and sponges to gently clean the eyes, nose, and a different one for the dock. Are you sure that's the right sponge? I don't want my bottom sponge on my face. And that smells like my bottom sponge. There, see? 
It wasn't your bottom uh, dock sponge. It's a completely different colour. If a hot day merits a bath or tail wash, then use a specially formulated horse and pony shampoo like Gallop to bring out the shine. Detergent should never be used on ponies. Make sure you dry them well to avoid chills. Oh, that's cold. After thorough rinsing in clean water, you can dry the tail helicopter fashion. For those special occasions, a squirt with canter applied with a stable rubber will give an extra sheen. Oh, lovely. See your face in that, girl. gone by before quilted clothing and stretched jodhpurs, everything seemed to be brown or tweed. Nowadays you can get by being correct and safe without being dull. First there are a few safety rules which need to be observed starting from the top. A riding hat approved to the BSI standard 4473 or 6472 is a must. Check out the kite mark inside. It must be worn with the chin strap fastened and girls' hair should be neat and tidy beneath it with no hanging jewellery. Bear in mind when dressing that long sleeves will offer some protection should you fall off or a pony nip you or drag you through brambles or nettles. Jodhpurs are easy to wear, stretch well and, your mother will be relieved to hear, relish regular trips around the washing machine. Boots need to offer some protection from hooves, so trainers don't really fit the bill, and wellies are also out, as they can get stuck in stirrups and are therefore dangerous. Smooth soles and low heels will prevent this happening. Keep your boots clean and shiny with riding boot cream. Gloves protect your hands from rope burns and are therefore essential when riding or leading. Quilted clothing can keep you dry when it's cold. During wet weather, wax jackets keep you dry and these can be reproofed with a product such as Dale's Spray Wax. Ideally, your stable should have two bolts on the half door, the one at the bottom being a kick bolt which you can operate with your foot. When leading through doorways, make sure the door is open wide and the pony goes through straight so he doesn't knock himself on the door frame. Turn him around to face the door so you can bolt it before removing the head collar. Otherwise, you could find yourself in the stable and the pony outside again. And of course, bolt the door on the way out. Yeah, make sure those bolts are shut. You don't want me trotting off to the supermarket. <laughs> Bedding keeps the pony warm and provides a mattress to rest his legs or lie on at any time. It should be banked up around the sides of the stable, providing more warmth and encouraging the pony to lie in the centre of the bed. Straw and wood chippings are the most popular forms of bedding. Both should be clean and need to be stored where the rain can't ruin them, like this hay barn. 
A deep wood chip bed is often recommended for a pony with a dust allergy or cough, as he can't eat it all night, taking the dust through his throat and making his condition worse. Unlike this straw bed, which Ginger appears to be making short work of. Both need to be mucked out at least once a day and skipped out regularly to keep them clean. Yeah. Enjoy, niche. Yeah. Come on, girl, and make me shout. Get in here and skip me out. Skip me out. I ain't making a fuss, I ain't making a scene, but if you look in here, girl, you'll see it ain't clean. Oh, does your mother know you've got her wash basket? <sighs> About time, too. It's a rotten job, but somebody has to do it. <sighs> That's better. Thank you so much. Good for the roses, that. Lovely smell. your pony will need some clean sheets to replace those removed during mucking out. Transporting it from the barn to stable in the wheelbarrow saves sweeping up. Ponies in the wild spend up to 22 hours out of every 24 eating. Of course, they would normally eat grass, and probably rather poor grass at that. The pony's digestive system is so designed that he needs small feeds on a regular basis, rather than one large feed a day with long and boring intervals of eating nothing at all. Oh, hello. Ponies kept at grass imitate this natural way of feeding. But when we bring them into stables and feed them ourselves, we must keep as close as possible to this method. The first rule of feeding is to feed them little and often. For example, four small feeds of concentrates spread throughout the day rather than two larger feeds. Yeah, or 12. We also need to feed plenty of bulk food. Concentrates give your pony energy so they can work for you, but you need to feed plenty of hay to compensate for the lack of grass. This is to ensure that his digestive organs are always well filled and that the pony feels comfortably full and instead of hungry and that the bacteria which lives in his gut and helps to digest his food are kept busy. If a pony goes for long periods without bulk food, the bacteria can die and he finds it difficult, if not impossible, to digest a feed when it eventually arrives. For this reason, we also need to keep to the same type of food. Any changes to a pony's diet should be gradual to allow time for his digestive system to adjust. Hay nets need to be tied at eye level with a quick release knot. If too high, the pony may get hay seeds falling on his head and into his eyes. If too low, he could get a hoof caught. Don't forget the hay nets will be lower when empty. The quality of the food is important. You wouldn't eat food that was going off or dirty or past the sell-by date. And ponies are just as particular. He'll probably refuse to eat rubbish anyway, so you might as well get the best. If your pony has to have a dust-free diet because of a cough or breathing difficulties, then you'll need to soak his hay for several hours prior to feeding or feed a dust-free alternative. Hay can be fed from the ground. Although this is a natural way to feed, it can be wasteful, as the hay can be soiled and trampled into the bedding. Feeding from hay nets offers many advantages. They can be filled and weighed accurately, and there is little wastage. Remember to feed hay by weight, not volume. If you are dampening short feeds, do so just prior to feeding him, otherwise they start to ferment. You can tell because they smell like homemade beer. 
Careful use of supplements such as Equimana and Prime Mover can give extra minerals and vitamins which may be lacking in certain natural feeds. This helps achieve a balanced diet for your pony. Keep to the same feeding times. Ponies enjoy routine and they don't like surprises. If your feeding times are erratic, you'll always have a pony who's looking out for a feed bucket. Oh, food! Food! I must have food! I'm starving! A hard and fast rule is never to work a pony immediately after a feed, or if he's just come in from the field and is full of grass. The stomach is next to the chest, and will press on the lungs and affect the pony's breathing. He could also suffer colic, which is a severe tummy ache and is serious in horses and ponies because they're incapable of vomiting. When feeding, insist on good manners. Don't allow the pony to push his nose into the manger or you out of the way. It's important to remember that a pony needs at least an hour to digest his short feed before working. So plan your rides around his meal times, not the other way around. Ponies need constant access to water, both in the field and the stable. For stable kept ponies, the water buckets should be topped up regularly during the day and the water change completely twice a day. Stale water tastes flat and uninteresting, as well as absorbing stable fumes. <coughs> Lovely. Most ponies happily allow you to lead them wherever you wish. Some, however, do not. Some won't go. Some go, but not very well. And some won't stop. <laughs> so let's get it right from the start. Hold the lead rope like this, gloves on for a better grip, stick ready, the slack of the rope folded back on itself and off the ground. Never ever wind the lead rope around your hand. You could be dragged. Yeah, never ever wind the lead rope around your hand. Don't forget that, yes. Stand by your pony's shoulder, light tap with the whip if needed, walk on. Yeah. Try that again. Take a step back, walk on. You want to push the pony. Don't try to pull him along. Step back, push, eyes front. And trotting is just the same with the leader's legs running in time with the ponies. Easy. Let's see that again. But what if you meet something the pony doesn't want to pass? Well, give him a lead. Just walk in front of him with the rope a little looser and tell him everything's OK. Sorry, Cobb, there's nothing to worry about. You go first. I'm right behind you. To turn him away from you so he doesn't tread all over your feet, just slip the rope under his chin and push him away. A little tug on the lead rope will prevent him from nipping you or eating the grass and is more effective than a dead pull. Remember, he's stronger than you are. A tap with a whip or a step backwards will prevent him from slowing down. Let's see that again. Turn. And don't forget, you are in charge. Yes, that is exactly what you think, my dear. Saddles are constructed as much for the pony's comfort as the rider. To keep weight off the pony's backbone, the saddle is made on a frame called a tree, which leaves a passageway, the gullet, where the pony's spine goes. 
The weight of the rider is spread across his back, and the saddle shouldn't touch the pony's backbone. The stirrups are run up, girth over the top. Make sure the saddle region is flat and clean, and gently place the saddle high on the withers, so you can slide it back into the correct position, so the hairs lie the right way and the pony is comfortable. Numbers must be pulled up into the front arch. Hmm, comfy so far. Go around the other side, check everything is flat, and lay the girth down gently so it doesn't slap his legs. Return to the near side and fasten the girth. Yes, gently with that girth now, please. <clears throat> Do up the girth in stages, remembering to tighten it properly when you're ready to ride. Well, that's tight enough. Stirrups should remain run up until you're ready to mount. Pulling out a front leg ensures there are no wrinkles under the girth which could trap sweat and cause galls. Now for the bridle. I don't think you'll have a lot of luck like that. Uh, I thought this was a bridle, not a medal. Try again. Uh, shouldn't you put the reins around his neck first? This is a fiasco. I'm off to the supermarket for some carrots. Bye! Ah, oh well. Get yourself another pony and watch Mary do it. Here, yeah. watch this. All right, Mary. <laughs> she means business. I'll give her a smile. After putting the reins over Welly's neck first for control, Mary removes the head collar. Facing the front, she slips her right hand under Welly's chin and around his nose, taking hold of the cheek pieces in that hand. With her thumb, she wriggles open the top of his mouth, where Welly has no teeth, and guides the bit in. Gently, without screwing them up, Mary points his ears through the headpiece, tidies the forelock and fastens a throat latch and noseband, tucking in all the loose ends so they don't flap about. She should be able to get a fist between his throat and the latch and several fingers in the noseband. The bit should just wrinkle the lips, giving Welly the merest hint of a smile. Yeah, wasn't I, Brill? Oh, that first girl's back. This'll be a laugh. Try again. That's it, you've remembered about the reins. Keep your hand on his nose for control. Well, he's being extremely uncooperative, but by staying at his shoulder and walking backwards with him, you've coped. There, got him. I wonder if Copper's back with the carriage yet. Hmm, he made a pretty good job of that, my dear. To ensure your tack is safe, lasts you a long time, is comfortable for the pony to wear and looks good, it should be cleaned regularly. Firstly, it will need stripping down to enable you to do it justice. Wring out a sponge in tepid water, because hot water is very bad for leather, and apply saddle soap. The foam you see in this sponge 
means it's too wet. So we'll rinse it and use it for washing instead of soaping. Wet the saddle soap instead and apply to a sponge or tack cleaning cloth that's barely damp to obtain a sticky, tacky feel which feeds the leather and gives it a shine. Years ago, grooms used to spit on the soap to give it the right consistency. But if anyone asks, we didn't tell you. Now, you'll need to wash all the dirt and sweat off, checking all the stitching as you do so, and looking out for signs of wear and tear. Then, use the soap's cloth to bring up a shine making sure you get into all the crevices and the underside as well. Now, on to the saddle, which has been placed onto a towel to prevent the leather from being scratched or splinters getting into the underside. You'll need to give it plenty of elbow grease and don't forget the underneath. Applying a smidgen of neat's foot oil occasionally will help prevent the leather becoming brittle. Now, all you have to do is put it all back together again, which shouldn't take long. So maybe handling and caring for your pony isn't as difficult after all, especially if you consider his feelings. Although you have to remember, it takes a lot of work, a lot of time and a lot of dedication. Not only will you gain greater enjoyment from your pony if you handle and care for him in the correct manner, but your pony will be happier too.